Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Happy Martian Dragon Hammer Cast. Uh, this week, we are going to be joined by uh, myself, Drake Spirit, and uh, the man himself, Ockhammer. How's it going, everybody? Uh, so today, we are going to be watching and uh, uh, following along with uh, Sam as he plays through uh, a, a set of... Uh, three Archon matches. So without further ado, uh, we'll just... Yeah, actually, um, we did just, um, just just a side notice that he did get a bye first round. Uh, we did end up with an odd number, and so that's what happened. He ended, he drew the magic number. So here we go. So how do you feel about uh, getting a bye in the first round? Um, byes in general kind of, they make me sad. Really, I mean that's the whole thing. I'm I'm here to play a game. I want to play a game, and then I get told, "Hey, sorry, uh, you win, but you don't get to play." Yeah, yeah. What are your I, thoughts on that? I well, I definitely remember back in my netrunner days. Uh, uh, I used to get the buy quite a bit, um, because they will typically give it to the person who it will have the least impact on. So definitely take that as being read as uh, if you get the buy, uh, you're not doing that great. <laughs> so well, that, that that explains why I got a, the buy a lot when we first started this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, so, so yeah. So like we said, this is Archon. So uh, right now we're just. Uh, we have uh, the players taking a look. Uh, they're done reviewing each other's deck lists. And uh, uh, do you know what uh, which deck uh, Sam is playing? Sam is brought. Uh, let's see, beneficially prismatic Priscilla. I'll say that five <laughs> times fast. That's a great name. And then and we so have... we've got a. Uh, it's Brobnar Sanctum Shadows. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, Scott up at the top, and he is the Digizag Baron Sneeden Philosopher. Another mouthful. I'm only going to try to say that once. <laughs> I'm glad you tried and not me. <laughs> yeah, this deck is actually kind of cool. It's a Dis Logos Mars, and it uh, it's a time traveler deck. Yeah, and I, I believe this already has some chains on it um, as of the recording. I uh, think he was sitting at seven chains here, possibly. Uh, that is entirely possible. It looked like he drew four cards. Uh, so if yeah, he's... I, I was say I know he was at for a fact he was at power level two um, at this time, and then Sam was sitting at zero chains on this deck. Yeah. Scott leading off, throwing a pit demon down. Unfortunately, there is no terror in that deck, which uh, is always a great card to see first hand or uh, first play. Oh, Sam. Sam and his sanctum. I. Uh... I, I don't know, man. <laughs> well, it, it, I'll tell you what. This deck he's running, uh, it's got um, two Zekiels, so we're going to see that a lot, where he is playing that Zekiel, getting whoever's next to him to fight, and does does damage. I mean, he just gets his board going, and y you just don't want to see his Sanctum out there, because he knows how to play Sanctum like nobody else. Mm -hmm. He is extremely good at uh, at his placement. You know, you noticed he put that bulwark down next to the Raiding Knight and then used the uh, uh, Zekiel to fight with the Raiding Knight, doing minimal damage, you know, off, off of a power 5 creature. He only took one. Yep. And we mind barbed out. Was that charge? That was a charge. Yeah. Charge is a handy card, especially if you're, you're playing out a lot of creatures. Mm-hmm. He must have drew into that. That that would have been nice to see right away. Yep. Looks like Scott's trying to figure out what he wants to do with that pit demon. Looks like he's going to attack it. And uh, ah, ah, there you go. Get it off the board. Yep. Then clear clear his what he's got started. 
with that three fates. Sneaky board clear. I like it. I really well, and usually when you got the pit team and you wanted to steal, but he had no amber, so it was a good move. Yeah, I really appreciate the fact that this game will give you those opportunities to uh, clear the board in more than one way. You know, you're never you're never just relying on, say, a key to dis, a gateway to dis, or a coward's end. You know, you can you can pair things up like uh, uh, the common cold and a save the pack. So you will always have options. And I'll tell you what, the options sometimes aren't a hundred percent clear, but if you if you work hard enough, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. Let's see, Dexter and Doc Buckton going down. Sam has no ember to uh, to capture, so Dexter just uh, just sits there. That's coming, bringing a smash out, stunning the Buckton. That's a good one. You don't want him to get extra cards. Yep. Interesting. Punching. Double punch. Yeah, punching Dexter, getting uh, putting it back on top of his deck. I, I don't know. Would, would you have done that? You know, that's actually a good thought. Is that I mean, he now that Sam has some amber, that's going to be on the top. There's going to be one captured. It's going to keep coming out. You may have just wanted to leave it out there and punch Bookman twice, get rid of it. Yeah. Scott very effectively using that wild wormhole to put Dexter just right back out on the board. Yeah, well, that's why he doesn't have to doesn't have to worry about drawing it. He can draw into fresh cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dexter, I definitely feel is one of those underrated tools that uh, is great in certain situations, um, but you really got to understand how to use him. That was interesting. So he changed his placement up. I'm sure he has a reason for it. Is that? Oh, that's Tabris. Tabris has um, Taunt. That's He wanted to get it next to Taunt. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm curious as to why he didn't put... Uh... <laughs> no, Tabris doesn't have Taunt. Tabris has uh, Fight to Capture 1. There, uh, there you go. Thank you. Yep, you're I was thinking of getting uh, confused with the other one. Yep, uh, champion and Athiel. <laughs> yes. Scott throwing down, starting the Mars train. Yeah, that when you when you start seeing those Mars creatures get out there with all their their tricky reaping actions, got to get them off the board. So that that's got to be Sam's Sam's next thing is get rid of. Get rid of one or two of those, if not both. Yeah. Great use of a doorstep. Just knock him right down. He's got a pretty strong sanctum field out there as well, so I don't think uh, John Smith or Megamouth is going to last much longer. This is uh, reaping with Remiel. Consuming the elusive on John Smith to steal one. Excellent. Who's he going to kill it with? Tabris to kill it and capture Tabris one. Tabris to, to capture one. See, that, there you go. There's Sam working, working his sanctum. Yep. Yeah, I was talking to him earlier, and he, you know, he loves anything Sanctum Shadows, you know, and... You know, and I'm, I'm actually really getting into Sanctum Shadows myself. Uh, I like the, the whole concept of having some, some big guys out there with armor. Um, and then having your, your tricky stealing with uh, shadows. Mm hmm. Oof. Succubus, Ember, Imp, and Schuler. I'm playing out some of those those core you know, control cards from Dis. He, that was, that's another thing that has to be dealt with. And he we know that Sam's got a Sanctum board going. And he just played Sanctum. Is he going to be able to play more out of his hand? Maybe stopping him from from drawing by saying, "Hey, I've got to. You have to deal with this. Figure yeah. it out." Yeah, it looks like he has one or two sanctum cards in his hand, so I think we're going to see it again, especially when he can use uh, Remiel to become an ambassador to uh, get some use out of his other creatures. Interesting choice on trading Smash for Schuler, though. I think I probably would have gone for uh, the Ember Imp first. 
Well, I, I feel like the reason he went that route was he's got something else up his sleeve. He said that, you know, that I'm going to do this. I'm, I know I'm already know I'm going to trade these two. Let's do that first. Get out of the way. And then I'll figure out the rest of my, my play. Yeah. Reaping with a raiding knight. There we go. Tabers to kill Ember Imp, just letting that uh, letting that two damage break on the armor. And there it is. There's his trick. Looks like Sam is on five Ember to Scott's three. So if you were Scott and you knew that your opponent just had this really powerful uh, Sanctum lineup that he was able to just start manipulating other houses with, you know, what what would be the thing that you prioritize? How would you uh, how would you deal with this? I, w I would have to get rid of first off the Remiel. Remiel's got to go. He's only a power three. If I have to throw a Dexter at him, I have to throw a Dexter at him. You know, and then the next thing that goes down is the Tabris. I mean, you know, they're gonna be, she's gonna be constantly attacking, constantly capturing. Gotta get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And here we go. I mean, Sam's now playing his his shadows, and he's just keeping Scott <laughs> off a key once again, stealing two there, bringing out his bullet eye. Bullet eye is a great rare, uh, elusive reap to destroy a flank creature. Uh, the only thing is it can turn around to bite you in the keister because that reap ability is not a may, it is a must. If you, uh, if you get rid of your opponent's board, uh, you got to start clearing your own. Yep. Or just not use it. That's the, and then you're not, you're not producing the amber. So it's, it's definitely an, an interesting situation you can run into. Mm -hmm. Um, Looks like Sam is on check currently at six. You know, I ran into a, a really interesting scenario uh, that I was kind of giggling at uh, when I was playing on Friday, uh, just a, a casual game, in which uh, my opponent had total and complete control of the board, uh, but I was still able to generate enough ember uh, just through my actions, or if I did have a creature, I was going to get rid of it immediately. Uh, so what I did was I put a silent dagger on one of uh, his more powerful reaping creatures, uh, forcing him to deal four damage to one of his own creatures. Now that's a tricky play. I like I, that. I thought I was pretty darn clever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there we go. Sam, Sam does have a key. Um, he has the awesome keys that he just brings out whenever he whenever he forges yeah same in his old school keys i love it looks like he's gonna let scott get that key though but he did clear his board um now there is a dexter in the discard i don't know if that was an error or I do believe that was an error. Uh, Dexter, by default, always uh, has to go to the top of your deck unless it is purged or discarded. I'm... We'll hand a dis and see who's going who's going to go. It's the rating right now. Very. Oh, it had an choice. amber on it. I, you know, I think I probably would have gone with the Remiel, uh, just to take away his ability to. Uh, go Sanctum and then uh, branch out into, you know, Shadows or uh, or his other house, Brabnar, I believe it is. And there it goes. And and maybe Scott left it out there on purpose, saying, "Hey, he's gonna reap. He's gonna use his bullet eye. Um, I want that two amber from that dust imp. It's a it's a good way to guarantee it." Yeah, that would not surprise me at all. Scott is, uh, he's a good player. Uh, he's fun to play against. Uh, every time I sit down across the table from him, uh, I know I'm in for a good game uh, against a good guy. I I agree. I always, whenever he wants to pick up a game, I'll pick up a game. If I get matched against him, 
in tournaments, it's always fun. Mm-hmm. Now he brings out a true brew here. True brew is tricky. I I have some very severely mixed feelings on that one. It's one of those things where if you have a way of getting rid of them right away, it's great. But you can run into that situation where, I mean, all it takes is a, a fear or a purge and you don't get that. Yep. Sam reaping has to kill the true Baru, giving Scott five ember. He must have a trap. Oh. Yep. That routine job steal too. Because he did play one earlier. Mm hmm. A safe place. Uh, sorry, hidden stash. Letting him archive one. Yeah, say... it looks like looks like his this deck just can pump out some amber when it needs to because he, he had just paid nine for a key, and now he's up to four already. Yeah. Sam is extremely good with his uh, shadow sanctum decks, uh, just in sheer control. Pawn sacrifice, getting rid of Zachiel. Interesting. Yep, getting rid of the Mega Mouths. Good mm -hmm. call. Reaping with a bullet eye. I'm guessing Tunk is going to go next. Either that or Zizix. Because I'll say Zizix can be tricky if he can start start getting his, uh, you know, reaping, showing a creature, archiving it, and then getting those three. He can get it pumped up pretty good. Yeah. Mag to the rat. Sam, I check again. Stealing. He is at nine. Unless Scott, uh, unless Scott can get his charrette out and lash him, uh, this game might be over. Well, it looks like he might have only eight. I'm seeing. So lash is an option. It looks like at this point. Oh, yep. Yeah, you're right. That's uh. There's the time traveler. Oh, man, I bet you he's just like, where is this? Either that or help from future self. One of the two has got to be there. He doesn't have many cards left. No, it looks like two in his deck. That's unfortunate when you have a time traveler deck and both your time traveler and help from future self are at the bottom. Yeah. Mother coming down too little too late, I think. Oh, oh face shifts into, into a charrette. I like it. I like it. He stays alive for one more turn. Hopefully he can keep it going. Scott drawing out. Shuffling his deck. Scott at four. Ember. Sam at five. Killing the time traveler. And, and then that was one thing that maybe he may have wanted to do differently is um, put mother on the on the flank, play face shift into his charrette first, put mother on the flank. This way, I mean, he got the bullet eye off. Yeah, I agree. Leaving and Sam in just a great <laughs> position. He's he's just got a pile of amber over there. He's on his last key. Check. Come take it from me. Yep. He's he's already passed he's already passed the point of no return for for a lash. Um this this isn't looking great. No, not at all. Yep, there it there is. There we go. There's the concession with the handshake. Well, so what were your thoughts on that one? Um definitely um Thought it was a great game. Uh, Sam definitely took control with his Sanctum board. And once, I, like I said, with Sam, one, once you get that Sanctum board going, it's just trouble. I agree. Sam is uh, extremely efficient at uh, utilizing his Sanctum creatures uh, and just getting the most uh, utility out of them that he uh, possibly can. Um, and that's just... Uh, and that's that's just not good. Uh, if you let him get that board developed, uh, you you got to have a board wipe in there, or else you're going to be dealing with uh, a lot of armor. Exactly. Yeah. As, as I say, it's 
his decks usually, like I said, you have to run either a board wipe or get super creative to create your own board wipe. It gets scary when he gets that board built up. Yeah. All right, and with that, uh, thank you guys, and uh, stick around. The next game is right around the corner.